All right. Now, joining me virtually is Dr. Josephine Omondi, a psychiatrist, to put things into perspective when it comes to autism and what is often misunderstood about it. Uh, Dr. Omondi, thank you so much for joining me uh, this evening. Uh, let's begin with defining just what autism is. I know by now we have a lot more information about it, but it's, it's such a struggle for many parents to even begin to tell what the signs are, to even get a diagnosis. So what should they be looking out for if they suspect that their child might be exhibiting autism? Uh, thank you very much. Um, autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder which is characterized by multiple behavioral problems such as um, uh, lack of communication or delays and deviation in communication, socialization, and particular stereotyped behaviors that may which de, uh, deviate from what we expect in other children who don't have autism now parents sometimes find it very difficult because they are told that your child uh, has um, uh, because the child they usually present with the lack of speech or if they had speech then the speech uh, the speech happened and then it, it, it later it disappeared so they are usually told that your child uh, maybe ate something or you ate something when you are expectant and that's why the child is not speaking but give it time then the child will be able to speak other behaviors like uh, being very fearful or uh, walking, walking on tiptoe and also inability to play with other children which are actually the commonest of the symptoms that we find among autistic children. Now, there are other characteristics like hyperactivity and restless and inability to settle down in one place, and then being picky in the foods that they are taking. And uh, another specific thing that we find in these children is that they do have um, what we call islands of special abilities. Some children are very good in music, like the one I've just seen, very good in music and also instruments. Some are very good in artwork, drawing. Others are very, very good in IT, and yet nobody has taught them. So those are a few that we have seen, right. and uh, you'll find that there are some odd things about them in terms of expressing their emotions. So Thank what you. should happen next, uh, Dr. Omondi? You know, once the child is diagnosed, for instance, and you mentioned these islands of special abilities. You know, what should parents be doing to help identify and get their children into those activities? Now, uh, the first thing to do is uh, take the child to the, the clinicians who are conversant with autism. And here I'm talking about uh, pediatrician uh, um, and psychiatrists who are able to make a diagnosis and once the diagnosis is made, then we, we, we plan for interventions. And the interventions are in, in, in several areas. In schooling, uh, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and other odd behaviors that are likely to be, uh, to be managed by medication. Although rarely do we give medication. We use more of behavioral intervention, which actually works very well. And we, in this behavioral intervention, we focus so much on the strengths and the abilities that the child is, is, is having. So parents are advised to look for these abilities of this child so that they can be maximized on. You'll find in many of these cases, and I remember talking to Susan, uh, she said she can count the times when throughout Caesar's life that she was able to really connect with him. In many cases, uh, an autistic child can be non-verbal. And so many parents struggle with creating that connection with their children. Uh, how do they do that in a non-verbal setting, if you will? Uh, we try to use the leads, the leads that the child has because they have ways of communicating their needs, although some may not, but uh, try to use the leads. Other times try to use some music uh, or something that the child likes 
so that you can understand what they want. For example, if, if a child who is autistic uh, wants water and is not able to verbalize, sometimes they reach for the cup. So once the child reaches for the cup, then you have to mention that word, cup, so that the child knows, uh, starts associating water and the cup. So when they need water, then they'll be able to say water. So you use their needs so that you can help them to be able to communicate their needs. And that works well. I have to talk about something that is uh, very common, especially when you're talking about uh, parents of special needs children, and that is stigma. It, oftentimes, the children themselves may not realize someone is discriminating against them or treating them ill, but parents can be aware, siblings can be aware, relatives can be aware of it. How do they deal with stigma? Now, uh, dealing with stigma is a big problem, and uh, I cannot say that you, ca you can deal with it completely, but we try. Uh, the best thing to do is ask the parents to seek for help as early as possible so that they start understanding their child and also communicate to the other family members and the extended uh, family. Number two, when they come to hospital for whatever intervention or even school, we usually put together parents. We, uh, we have parent uh, uh, group sessions. In these group sessions, they are able to talk about their challenges, their, their uh, experiences with their children. And we also call other, other uh, professionals who deal with the, these children, like the lawyers who deal with children's rights, the people from the uh, National Council for Persons with Disability, uh, the teachers from uh, Kenya Institute of Special Education, the occupational therapists. So that team uh, sits together with the parents and we are able to talk about the challenges and also seek, uh, give recommendations. And they also teach each other on how some of them have managed to overcome the difficulties. And that has been very, very useful. Uh, before I let you go, Dr. Amondi, I have to ask, because you have parents who, you know, they are parents of autistic kids. They've seen uh, the success of Caesar and, and are asking the question, can that be my child too? How common is it that, you know, um, an island of a special ability like music, for instance, can pull a child out of their autistic world, if you will, to now then see the success that he's exhibited. How common is that? And can it happen for other children? Now, in our setup, uh, I cannot say that it is common because we have not seen very many. But uh, when we look at literature and, we, and these children, these are children who are actually um, helped right from a very, very early age. So we talk of early intervention so that you're able to recognize these abilities very, very early and use them to be able to help them. So, but in our setup, you find that they come for intervention very, very late. And sometimes uh, that then hampers any effort that will help them to, you know, to, to maximize on th th this ability. So I've seen uh, a few of them, and I, I don't think I can count up to 10. Probably there are about seven or eight that I've seen with very good musical abilities and art ability and also IT uh, ability. Dr. Mondi, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for coming on and making sense uh, of this still very misunderstood condition. But nonetheless, having professionals and experts like you help the journey a bit more easier to navigate. On that note, let's take a short break here on Citizen Weekend. Sports News is coming up next. <laughs>